you've been on the stage for years performing in so many genres. In fact, you know, someone was asking me, well, tell me about your music. And, I, you know, I said, it's, it's hard to describe. You've done country, rock, pop, indie, folk, all of it. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it's true. It, it music, is, music in general is sometimes hard to define unless you make music for a specific thing. Um, most musicians I know love pretty much every kind of music there is and have a hard time staying in their lane. I don't know what you'd call it, but it, it basically just means like trying to sound like yourself is the best you can do. That's a great way to describe it. Do you have a genre you love most or that you find that you perform more often? No, no, I definitely am all over the map. Um, there, there are so many things I love. I, I could not commit to one thing. There's just no way. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many things out there to enjoy, right? I guess take a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, probably a good way to live life. Do you think that's a testament to how long you've had so much success in your career, maybe sort of tapping into so many different types of things and bringing fans from all ages and all different walks of life? I'm just a, I'm just a fan of like I'm a I'm definitely a starry eyed fan of music and art in general and it, it's in my life every day and I'm always aware of it and uh, you know there was a time in my life when I did not realize there was a such thing as a person who didn't really care that much about music I thought that it was a universal trait in hum, human beings. And when I learned that wasn't true, it really, I think it made me pretty depressed for a while. Oh, wow. Wow. No, we need like, music. No, we do. We really do. I mean, there are people, I just didn't realize that not every single person loved it like a college DJ who was out there combing for every possible um, new thing and, you know, old thing that had maybe gotten left by the wayside. I, I just didn't realize that. And, and it is a, a funny thing to just automatically, automatically assume that everybody is looking for music. And some people aren't. Some people are happy to exist with, you know, ambient music that just is in their lives, like the music in the grocery store, or they like top 40 but they don't invest in it or listen to it they just know it's there and it makes them happy or there are people who just don't care about it at all which I I wonder what I can't imagine it it's not a judgment I just can't imagine being that way because you know all people are different I, I love too how music brings people together which is well, I think it's so great. Like we have shows like Stern Grove because it's a free event and everyone comes in in this beautiful setting. And it's yeah. really, it's it's what's happening on stage and how it resonates through the crowd and just that community vibe. Yeah, those are my favorite shows to play. I love that we are this sort of invisible reason that, people come to get it's like the greatest landmark of community that we still have local community is you know a festival a local festival or a venue that is specific only to your area you know it's like it's not a chain it's not it's like it's not a, a duplicable event and so it's very very specific to that moment and it really depends on who shows up it's not it's about 20% about the artist and, you know, 80% about the community that are there and their responses and their, their, you know, engagement and engagement doesn't always necessarily mean like how hard they're listening to the band. It could be like, what kind of connections are they forming at the show? Like maybe it's the first show you ever take your little brother to, or maybe it's where you meet your life partner, or maybe it's where you make a new best friend or you make a new bandmate. You know, it, there are so many possibilities. And those are, you know, very much chapter heads of our lives. And it's such a, a, a beautiful job to be kind of a facilitator of those moments in cooperation with the venues and the festivals and the places like that that are so unique like it's not something you can duplicate 
It isn't. And I think it's such a, I don't Have you ever played Stern Grove before? I never have, but I've oh. seen the photos and I'm like, you, what? That is amazing. So I'm very excited. Oh, we're so excited you're coming. It's so beautiful too, because it's literally like a grove of trees nestled in the middle of this bustling city. There is really nothing like it. And I think that adds to the ambiance and the vibe. And you guys are coming on such a great weekend, especially for us here in the Bay Area. It's Pride weekend. So everyone is just out with Aww. positive full force. So it, it's a great weekend to play here. Wonderful. I'm so thrilled. And you'll be uh, co-headlining with the Indigo Girls. Have you guys played shows together before? I know. I love them too. I'm like, oh, I can't even talk about them. <laughs> yes, I have played shows with the Indigo Girls before. And they're kind of my, they, they're they my heroes as far as, as far as, there's no limit to why they're my heroes. I don't know why I said it like that. But man, their musicianship is ridiculous. And then there's their connection with their audience, which is, I remember, I, I think I came on stage with them, with Kelly Hogan in Chicago many years ago. And I just remember the crowd's response to the opening act. I remember what the, this was like the benchmark of what an artist's relationship with their audience was like. I remember watching beforehand and Michelle Malone was opening the show who's wonderful and I remember the audience being so into her and so positive and it's not something you normally see they're like you see people into an opener but they were yelling things like you're doing a great job and like just really rallying for her like they were so excited that the Indigo Girls would curate an, a night for them and they were so excited to see who would be playing the show and they were so into Michelle and just the way they treated her was so indicative of like the the 360 of the Indigo Girls and I just remember thinking that's what I want my relationship with my audience to be like I want to make them feel like that and it totally changed my wow. outlook wow yeah. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. I can't tell you how many things the Indigo Girls got me through in my life. It's just, I think that's the thing, like you resonate with music right. and people. So thank you for sharing that. That's very- You're welcome. welcome. It's, it was such a huge moment. Like I didn't know it could be like that. And I just was staggered and blown away and so moved. And I was just like, that's how I want to make my audience feel. That's, I want them to feel so welcome and so cared for and I want them to feel like it's their Saturday night too and I understand what's going on out there in the audience and like they don't have to look at me and be silent the whole time they can be together it's like a moving living organism well it's clearly working you have a huge fan base just looking at all this stuff how excited people are to have you come to the Bay Area and perform and just the years that you've been you know doing music that's a testament to how good you are probably performing live and just being there for your fans so kudos to you for that well, thank you thank you I try I try I'm not always perfect like there are days where you know I'm really tired or you know there's just stuff going on in your life but there's never a night where I don't feel like I want to be there and, you know, I may feel like I don't want to be there five minutes before I get on stage. But then when I get on stage, I'm like, oh, my God, you're here. Yeah. OK, that was that was silly of me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. That's cool to hear. What can people expect musically um, for what your show uh, here in the Bay? What do you plan on playing? Are we getting some new stuff, some old well, stuff? The, it's it's a lot of stuff from our Wild Creatures release that myself and anti released um this last year and half of the band are the new part of the new pornographers which is the other band i'm in so we're very <laughs> it's very incestual we just all <laughs> uh cross over with each other and um basically everybody there sings like a bird so it's kind of all about the harmonies Ooh. it's gonna be gross it's gonna be gross. It's gonna be awesome. 